Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to utilize full information maximum likelihood estimation when carrying out path analysis with Levine. And this particular estimation approach is designed to deal with the problem of missing data. So the default approach to missing data in Levine is to perform listwise deletion prior to estimation of a model. And this approach can bias parameter estimates if the data are not missing completely at random and may also result in substantial loss of data in those cases where there is a large proportion of data missing on your variables. So Levine provides the facility to perform maximum, full information maximum likelihood estimation, which allows you to retain more of the available information from your variables and will uh, decrease the likelihood of biases in your parameter estimates. Now this model that I'm going to be showing you is based um, exactly on um, the model from a previous video. So I'm going to include a link underneath the video description to that particular video. And the reason why this is important is because uh, I, go, I cover uh, the syntax for the model in great detail. So in this particular video, I'm not going to go uh, too deep into the syntax. Uh, mainly, I'm just going to show you how you can make a few changes to that syntax and be able to effectively carry out um, full information, maximum, li maximum likelihood estimation. Also, uh, underneath the video description, I'm going to include a link to the data that contains missing values. So it's in a CSV file. And this text file is also going to be included as a link as well. Now, kind of scrolling through uh, the uh, text file right here, you'll notice that I'm using the library function to call up the Levon package. And then this next line right here is basically a line uh, reading in the data from the CSV file into a data frame, which I'm calling MissData1. So in order to just kind of get the ball rolling, I'm going to copy this and go into R and paste it in. Actually, I've already done that. Uh, so you'll notice that we've got uh, the library function uh, there's Levon, we're calling up that package. And then right here on this next line, I'm reading in the data from the CSV file into uh, that data frame. And right here, I'm using the structure function uh, in order to take a quick look at the data uh, frame and specifically the variables within it. So we're going to be mainly focusing on the performance goal variable, achievement variable, mastery goals variable, interest variable, and anxiety variable. And you'll notice that over here there's a couple of NAs and th that's just basically uh, indicating a couple of cases where there's data missing on uh, a couple of these variables and there's also some other missing data within uh, the uh, data set. So when you are running path analysis that involves full information maximum likelihood estimation uh, or FIML there are two possible approaches in Levine. So the demos I provided thus far uh, have relied on the Levine function to estimate the model parameters. And you can still do this using uh, FIML. However, you must explicitly estimate means and intercepts for the model. So um, you have to be a lot more detailed when it comes to uh, utilizing the Levine function. So your syntax, you have to specify basically all of the parameters that you want to estimate, whereas um, other functions like the SEM function and CFA function have certain defaults that make life a little bit easier for you. But um, at any rate, um, so when you estimate means and intercepts in the model, you're basically going to be including a 1 plus uh, on any line where an endogenous variable is being predicted by other variables in your model. So this is going to estimate intercepts for the endogenous variables. Um, you're also going to be needing to request estimation of the means for your exogenous variables. So to do that within the syntax, you're going to have the name of your exogenous variable followed by a tilde and then a one. And I'm going to show you that um, next. So scrolling down, this is the model that we specified in that previous video. And as I noted before, we're not going to go into all of the details, but I will show you that um, right here on this line, we have the interest variable. That's an endogenous variable that's being predicted by mastery goals, performance goals, and socioeconomic status. You'll notice that following the tilde, I have a one and a plus. So that is indicating that we're estimating the intercept for that variable. Next, we have the achievement variable. That's also an endogenous variable. So we have it being predicted by anxiety, interest, and mastery goals, and we are estimating the intercept for that variable as well. 
Then we have the third endogenous variable in our model, which is anxiety, being predicted by performance goals and mastery goals, and we're estimating that intercept. So kind of going on down uh, right here, everything is pretty much the same uh, as what I've uh, demonstrated in the previous video, but now we're going to estimate the means for our exogenous variable. So there's my little comment line right there. And you'll notice that I say mastery tilde 1, performance goals tilde 1, and SES tilde 1, and then closing out with that final apostrophe right here. So by doing this, this is basically estimating the mean for mastery goals, performance goals, and SES, which are our three exogenous variables within the model. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and copy this off and paste it into R from our text file. And now let's fit our model. So to fit our model, what I'm going to do is essentially create a, a fit object, which I'm just going to call fit, F-I-M-L-1. And then uh, you'll see the arrow pointing to it. And then we have the Levon function right here. Then I'm going to specify model1, which is the name of our um, our object that contains our model specification above, which we just went through. Uh, we're using the data argument set equals to misdata1. That's our uh, data frame name. And then we're including now an argument called missing. And so missing equals, and then in quotation marks, FIML. So that's going to uh, engage the full information maximum likelihood estimation. Uh, on the next line, you can see right here we have summary. Um, and inside this, basically the name of our fit object, which contains the estimation, the, out, the results from our estimation right here, and then fit.measures, which is set equal to true, in order to get um, various uh, fit indices. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into R and hit enter. And so kind of going all the way up to the top right here, you can see that we have uh, our chi-square uh, goodness of fit test right there. You can see there's our uh, CFI value, our TLI, uh, our TLI looks pretty awful. Um, our RMSEA right here, that's pretty bad as well. And then there's our uh, standardized root mean square residual. And then scrolling down, you can see we have our estimates, uh, covariances. And in particular, what I want to draw your attention to is right here where it says intercepts. And so you can see we have uh, the intercepts that, that were estimated from our model. And then you can also see for mastery, performance goals, and SES, these are the means for our three uh, exogenous variables. So these are the intercepts for the endogenous variables, and we have the um, means for the exogenous variables. And just keep in mind that the intercept for um, each of these variables uh, that you see right here are, are just basically the means for those variables that are conditional on the predictors of those variables. Now just for fun, let's take a quick look at um, our model. So I'm going to use the library function and call up the SEM plot uh, package and then uh, use the SEM paths function in order to uh, visualize our, our model. And again, I went over the uh, SEM uh, plot uh, package some in the previous video. So I'm going to uh, call this up and so this is our model and so this is uh, basically how it's laid out so you can see we have mastery goals performance goals and SES uh, right here these are our exogenous variables and then our endogenous variables there's interest achievement and anxiety right there now you may be wondering uh, what would have happened if you didn't include the uh, one plus right here in uh, this line right here and this line right here and um, this line right here, as well as in, uh, requesting the means for our exogenous variables. So, uh, well, this is basically that the model specification without those additions that I went over above. So let's just copy this in and run the same model. But in this case, I'm just going to create a, a new fit object. I'm just going to call it fit FIML2. And we're just calling this model model2 right here. So that's uh, this right here. And we're going to leave the missing argument in place uh, with um, set to FIML. So let's just uh, reanalyze the data in this particular case. So one thing to note, um, as we kind of scroll up, you'll notice that now um, the chi-square value you know, becomes ridiculously large, significant. Uh, the comparative fit index, you can see a zero. TLI, I mean, basically, 
um, a number of these measures um, really become nonsensical. And as we kind of scroll down, you'll also see where it says intercepts. Um, you know, that basically none of our conditional means for our endogenous variables or the means for our exogenous variables were estimated. So uh, that's essentially what will happen if you don't make those changes to your syntax that I covered earlier on, uh, and in particular when you're running your analysis using the, the Levon function. Now that said, you can use um, this uh, particular specification uh, if instead of using the Levon function, you use the SEM function. So right here, I'm, put, I'm typing in SEM and leaving everything else the same as what we just did. So let's just do that. So in this case, um, we will estimate our model using the SEM function. And you can see right here that, kind of scrolling up, you can see that we get basically the same chi-square values and CFI, TLI values, RMSCA, SRMR. You can see that all of our estimates are the same uh, as what we did uh, earlier in our first model. And you can also see right here that uh, under in intercepts, you can see that uh, the intercepts for our in in uh, endogenous variables and our, our means for our exogenous variables were all estimated. And that's because the SEM function has uh, certain defaults that the Levon function does not have. If you're curious about what you can do in those cases where you have um, non-normal or non-normality in your endogenous variables, uh, another option right here, I'm going to use the SEM function again uh, with this model that we just covered, and we'll use the estimator. Uh, set to MLR, so that's capital M, capital L, capital R in quotation marks, and still using the missing argument set to FIML. So in this case right here, um, we can uh, run this, and we basically get uh, up here, you can see that we'll get a, a slight mistake because I didn't change this down here to read uh, fit FIML3, which is what was being estimated right here, so excuse me there. So I'm going to copy this instead and paste it in and run the model. And so now when we scroll up, you can see that we get robust uh, test statistics and uh, standard errors. So scrolling down here um, as well. So at any rate, uh, that covers uh, my discussion of how to perform full information maximum likelihood estimation. Uh, in Levon when you're running path analysis with manifest variables. Thanks for watching.